Hi, I'm Dr. Amy, and this week's blog is on fatigue and how it's closely associated with past trauma. And certainly as we improve our physical health and we can address some of the medical things that might be contributing to fatigue, we often still are left with this underlying emotional component to the fatigue. And for so long, I went back and forth on this. Was my fatigue all emotional, not at all emotional, all physical, medical, and slowly over the years, as I've become more and more aware of my body, and I can feel those emotional triggers better, I definitely have been able to understand that my fatigue episodes will follow and are associated with the emotional triggers that can happen in my life. And so when I talk about the freeze response, I talk about it as if everybody understands it. And so let me clarify the freeze response. The freeze response is a, um, an option that our nervous system can take in order to survive a situation. And our nervous system also has the option of responding with fight or um, flight. But if these two options are not possible in a life-threatening situation, it will go into freeze. And if this happened for um, kind of like a period of time, especially early on, then the nervous system gets primed to almost immediately go down that pathway into the freeze response with certain triggers and situations. So that's where I'm at. That's my nervous system. It is primed for the freeze. And I've done a lot of work with it and it's gotten a lot better. And I wanted to share that experience with you today. So what happened before was that when something would happen that I would feel overwhelmed with life, that's when my nervous system would go into the freeze. And for me, the freeze looks like um, I feel like I'm in a daze. I feel like I'm much more distanced emotionally from people. And I feel like I'm, 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 I, I feel like I'm isolated. I can be around a million people, but I feel, um, I feel isolated. I feel like I'm not really a part of the group. I don't feel like I'm really interacting authentically because I'm not. When you're in the freeze, the, the, you can't have authentic connection with someone. And, but nobody else can tell that I'm in the freeze unless you know me really well. And then you might say, you know, hey, is everything okay? You just don't seem like yourself today. But otherwise you can pretend to be your normal self and other people will never know that you're in the freeze. When I'm in the freeze now, this did not happen when I was growing up from what I can remember. But now for the last several years when I'm in the freeze, I will also have a body reaction and that's when I can get fatigue. And it's, um, it's been it, very interesting because I will have this fatigue usually the next day following a big emotional trigger for me. And I say it's a big emotional trigger and yet it could have been a simple phone call. It could have been an, an email that I still haven't responded to. But for me, for my nervous system, for my triggers, if it's enough to get me into that place of insecurity um, with uh, and due to my attachment trauma, then that becomes my, you know, my, my big trigger that uh, for other people would not have been a big trigger. And so this is very predictable for me now, which has helped because I used to be really afraid of the fatigue episodes. I would wonder, was I ever gonna get out of them? Because when you're in the middle of it, it feels like there's no end. And, and so I would have this fear of going into these freeze responses where I would become just kind of emotionally numb. That's kind of how it feels, emotionally numb. Um, I, I give up the fight. I don't care anymore. That's my freeze. And 
And so then my body kind of follows with that and kind of gives up and goes into this very low energy state. And usually before it would last for five to seven days, which felt like an eternity at the time. And that's what a lot of the fear was about, was trying to figure out how to get to where I wanted to be in life. If I was having these episodes that I couldn't control, that would really impair my life for a period of time. And as I've worked more on my freeze response, it's gotten a lot better, meaning my body response has gotten a lot better. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today because I had a big breakthrough this weekend. And for the first time ever, when I went into the freeze response, it only lasted a day. And that's, um, I'm, I'm really stoked about this. I really am happy because I think that that really shows me uh, that there, there can be healing, there can be progress, that even though our nervous systems are primed for freezing or for dissociating, meaning kind of going to a happy place in our brain, um, disconnecting from other people, sometimes, you know, even from our own bodies to a certain degree where, you know, I'm not really aware of my body um, when I'm in the freeze response. Um, but that this can be repaired. This can be rewired and you can change that and help your body uh, achieve a better state of health despite past trauma. And so, I mean, what I did different this time, and I'm not sure that it was specifically because of what I did this time, it may have just been an accumulation of all the work that I've put into my body. But what I did this time was I did not fight it as much. Um, usually, I, I, I fight it. I mean, it's, it's uncomfortable. I, I feel that the fatigue episodes especially are a hindrance to my life. Um, and I felt that frustration this weekend because I had wanted to do um, a couple bike rides that were really important to me. And I couldn't, I, I was, I was out. I mean, it was, it was back to the, you know, I'm struggling to just stand. It hurts to stand. My body aches just to stand. And I was at a training and I went to the training and I'm sitting there and for the first time I didn't fight it. And I fully allowed myself to go into the freeze response fully while I was sitting there in the training. And this means that I completely let my body give in to the freeze. Um, it's this very, very heavy feeling. And it's um, heavy feeling in terms of your muscles, your legs, and yet um, it's hard to really feel them as well. My breathing really slows down, becomes very shallow, um, very slow breathing. And usually I, I close my eyes just because they're heavy. They're, I mean, everything just becomes so heavy. And I sat like that rather than fighting it like I would normally have done if I were in a group of people. And no one seemed to notice. No one seemed to pay attention. Thankfully, the group that I was at was one that, um, I mean, we were talking about freeze responses in our nervous system. So they totally would have understood, which is probably why I felt safe to do that there but allowing myself to go into the freeze and then just waiting for my body to naturally come out of it. And the freeze response is time limited. And so for me, uh, I'm usually out of it. If I let myself fully go into it, I'm usually, my body will turn itself back on after 10 minutes. And this is what it did. And what I start to feel is this tingling in my toes, tingling in my fingers, like they want to start moving. And so I do, I start moving them, I start moving my body, however it feels like moving and whenever it feels like moving. I do not rush this process. And maybe that was the difference this time that allowed my body to recover faster and only spend one day in that fatigue rather than the usual three days. Um, I, I still slept um, like two, three more hours than usual that day but the next day it was gone. And that is the first time that that has ever happened. So if you are experiencing fatigue, 
I really would encourage you to look into the emotional undertones to that because they're going to be there. Yes, please look into the medical side as well. Do not neglect that. Do not neglect your physical health. But nor do you neglect the emotional piece to, to the fatigue. And I mean, I've never seen the fatigue not associated with the freeze response. And so learn about the freeze response, learn about the dissociation that's happening in your body and then start working on it. Find a therapist, find a somatic experiencing practitioner and start working with this freeze response that you can um, also uncouple the fear, not be afraid of it and start to let your nervous system rewire and repair itself because it can, it can heal and it can get better. So thank you for letting me share my personal experience. It's always an honor and I hope that in some way this can help you.